Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Welcome to a late night large, which hopes to quietly blend in with its surroundings. I am your finely tuned apex predator, Aaron Bliss, and next to me sits your shameless scavenger, Mike Large. Evening all. I th- you might have got them the wrong way round, I think. <laughs> but I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. That's all right. That that's that. Uh, my sources are pretty sound usually. Oh really? Let's put it to the viewers. Uh, viewers. I hope no one's trying to watch Lena and I. The two of us, who is the finely tuned Apex <laughs> Predator? Thank you. Grow well, on. Tonight, as I'm sure you uh, gathered from our hilarious intro, the uh, the theme we decided to discuss and deliberate and pontificate over is food chains. The food chain. Food chains as a plural all over the world. We might even get a chance to discuss food webs. And all kinds of other little uh, mini tay of that particular subject. Indeed, should be good. S- Hopefully, what do you think when I say uh, when I say food chain? What what does it inspire in your tiny mind? Can't stick to the subject. Tiny mind. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of arsehole are you? That face. Tiny oh, that fucking face. mind. One thing straight away. Obviously, fight to be at the the top of the food chain. Which is obviously where I sit. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming out. Oh, that's what she said. Oh, <laughs> I can believe that. But the food chain, of course, we're referring to our evolutionary heritage. Because right now, in these times, some might not see a food chain that we're a part of. Some might say we've taken ourselves out of the food chain. Of course we're part of the food chain. Yeah? Of course we are. Well, first of all, let's chew the gristle of the definition of a food chain. Chew the gristle, I like it. <laughs> a food chain is slightly different from what I discussed as a food web earlier. A food web is a very complex and interlinked version of the food chain, whereas a food chain is, is quite simplistic in a linear fashion. Okay? And you'll be happy to know, Mike, I uh, did some pre-reading. Oh, yes. Here's one I read about before. On, uh, on Wikipedia about uh, trophic levels which I'm sure you're familiar with yeah but essentially if we break it down to its uh, most obvious the food chain is of course which animal gets eaten by which other animal which gets eaten by which other animal then by what yeah, by what are they eaten by and eventually by me <laughs> eventually everything is eaten by Mike he's like one of those Russian dolls <laughs> yeah so Mike, uh, do you think we well, could, well. do you think we could come up with a very simple, uh, a very simple definition? Uh, not definition, a very simple example of this, because a trophic level, by the way, is uh, is the definition of where one sits in a food chain. A trophic level is uh, is who are you eaten by and what do you eat, basically. And normally they're separated into around about four, maybe five levels. And the examples we're given by our sponsor. Uh, level one is actually the lowest rather than the highest. Level one would be determined as uh, plant any plants or algae that make their own food through photosynthesis or whatever, and uh, they're actually called primary producers. So they don't actually have require to eat anything. They, like I said, they produce their own energy. Level two are the herbivores that eat those plants and algae, and they're primary consumers. Level three, unfortunately, these primary consumers are natural prey for the level threes, which are normally some kind of carnivores, sometimes omnivores, but, yeah, carnivores being meat eaters, which eat the primary consumers, and they are secondary consumers. But, of course, it doesn't stop there, because there's usually something bigger and badder with sharper teeth above those, who are even more deadly carnivores. And they... We'll sometimes eat the herbivores, but they'll also 
feast on the uh, the carnivores below them in the food chain. They are the tertiary consumers, and if we do have a level above that, it will obviously be the apex predators. Level five, they have no natural predators. Thus, they are not eaten by anything and sit at the top of the food chain, straddling their domain like Alexander the Great. What do you think, Mike? I think that uh, puts you on, like, herbivore. You're, like, level two. <laughs> I'll give you level two. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you should see And I, I'm level six. Oh, uh, okay. Which is, obviously, the one above the... Yeah, it's, commas, I, I apex it. predators, which yeah. apparently have no predators in the top of the food chain. Yeah, there's no level obviously six. I, it's known obviously as the, I sit. It's known as the Chuck Norris level. Yeah, it's just me and Chuck. Okay. Just me and Chuck <laughs> occupy that, that level. Okay. So. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I should also mention that they, uh, they talk about also decomposers, which basically are for the basically the plants the primary uh, the primary producers if they don't just convert their energy from photosynthesis they might feed on fungi for instance or dead matter the nutrients from dead matter on trees and other things so decomposers also form a part of the food chain so the cycle of life begins afresh wonderful I know isn't it it fills you with circle yeah but tonight, it's, it's a bit of a return to our former glories, Mike, because... Morning glories. No, that's no. just you. Oh, sorry about me. In the playground. But, no, we've... Um, Leave those kids alone. We've returned to the, the notion of, however briefly, the notion of relating tonight's music to the theme in question, making it all very deliberate. So we've, all of our tracks in some way relate to the food chain. Human beings have obviously been a part of this since their very early evolutionary beginnings. Yes. There was a time, not so very long ago, when man would never have considered themselves an apex predator. How did we get to that stage? We got smart. We got... Yeah, we got smart. <clears throat> I think we discovered gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, we got smart. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what... That More than anything else, that's probably what did it. We evolved, but we became you know, that's, superior, yeah. if not physically, intellectually, and that allowed us to uh, build weapons that were far superior to any other predator. Yeah, which is quite amusing because the definition of apex predator. This is what I mean by human beings aren't really apex predators if you look at it, because the definition of an apex predator is a predator which preys on all the species below it but has nothing that naturally preys on it whereas we still do have animals that prey on us they're just not able to we've that's what i mean we're, we're not really top of the food chain we've just taken ourselves out of the food chain <laughs> it's a one-way thing we dip into the food chain we take what we want from the food chain but we don't form part of it because the vast, 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 vast majority of us are, are never going to run into the situation where we're having to defend ourselves against a tiger or a bear. I've done that a few times. Yeah, you and Chuck on your uh, backwards retreats, yeah? Yeah, we've had a few fights with a few bears. I heard you spit roasted one. We did, actually. And yeah. I'm not talking but, about cooking. Oh, no. <laughs> that was particularly, particularly big grizzly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Got up in our grill. So uh, I said, you know, Chuck, just I ain't got time for this, mate. <laughs> uh, we've just we've just done over a load of these, and now this big fella's come along. I want to sit this one out, <laughs> deliver a roundhouse kick, and uh, that'll be that. So we did. Yeah. And then, and then in, you uh, uh, you made Chuck a necklace from bear's teeth. Yeah. And you used his we, claws as a can opener. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. That was. <laughs> Before we split roasted it. <laughs> Dear God. Then we ate it. <laughs> oh, you split roasted it, then you cooked it. That's right. Oh, dear. That's a sickening story. It will stay forever in my mind. <laughs> and yours, eh, Chuck? I know you're listening. <laughs> we know you're listening, Chuck. You're uh, one of our most valued listeners. Although I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of you. 
Well, no. Even I might struggle with that. Yeah, because you're not just talking about your death. You're talking about the deaths of all of your forebears being eradicated from history, really. that That's the price of offending Chuck Norris. So there you go. Don't do it. <laughs> Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. I was just uh, checking out the uh, thing about the killer whales. I was just reading that while we were... Uh, uh, I always I always had a problem with killer whales because obviously I always thought, well, they're not killer whales because they're not man-eaters. Because you assumed, you know, sharks. Sharks were the real killers and, and killer whales, you know, is a bit of a misnomer. But obviously you see the reason why they're called killer whales because they, they hunt practically anything in the sea. Yeah. So they... They literally are, well, they're the dustbins of the ocean, really, aren't they? No wonder they're called killer whales. And they look pretty cool as well. Mm. They're like, killer whales remind me of, uh, if a dolphin wanted to be like a badass and painted themselves black. And they have a lot bigger. Yeah, and it would look look a little bit like a killer whale. They are pretty cool. So. They are cool. uh, Mike, have you heard of uh, the con... uh, uh, the, uh, uh, blah, 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 the concept blah, blah, blah. of biomass transfer efficiency that's right in front of us right now yes well at a glance it's essentially what is pretty obvious to everyone is that with each link in the pyramid the higher you go at the pyramid the less creatures you'll have which is obviously true of animals because it's supply and demand isn't it if there's more creatures in a certain on a certain level there won't be enough food to go around and they'll eventually die out and their numbers will thin out what thus he's, what he's saying is obviously there are more primary producers and then uh, than primary le- yeah then primary consumers and more primary consumers than secondary consumers etc more secondary consumers than tertiary consumers yeah it's a classic hierarchy it makes sense and uh, and then obviously only me and Chuck <laughs> yeah, of course. There's an argument that mankind used to be within the food chain. They started moving up the food chain. And now they have no natural predators. They just prey on each other. Do you think there's. Do you think that's a rational argument? No. No? Not really. Explain. Well, it's pretty obvious. Well, okay, and look. I don't know what you're trying to say, but okay, look, explain how... Okay, well, let me put it this way, okay. Now, evolution has taught us that generally animals that move up and down the food chain or animals that evolve, the one thing they have in common is they, they run on their instinct. They do what they think it will take to survive and to procreate, to continue. And survival of the fittest. It, yeah, to a certain extent, yeah. So... When we lost that kind of instinct, that killer instinct, because we got to the situation where we lifted ourselves out of the food chain, did we then turn on each other to find a new food chain? For instance, you know I was talking about hierarchy. What does that biomass transfer efficiency hierarchy remind you of, obviously? The economic systems we have, because Mm -hmm. you have the... You have obviously the lower working classes are the vast majority, and then just above them will be obviously the skilled working classes, and then you go up, you know, to the middle classes, the upper middle classes, the higher classes, the aristocracy, the monarchy, and each step you go up again, it thins out. There's less and less people. Well, of so course, what, that's always been the case. There's always so yeah. So be. what I'm trying to say is. Mankind was part of a certain hierarchy, nature's hierarchy. He lifted himself out of it. And then the people who'd done best out of it kind of thought, actually, we need a new hierarchy. Hierarchy amongst ourselves. Yeah, that's what I mean by lifting ourselves out of the food chain. I think we probably had a, a hierarchy amongst ourselves before we were lifted out of the food chain as peop- as animals and creatures within the food chain have their own hierarchy. I wouldn't call it a hierarchy. Mm. It's a oh, very, yeah, very, very simple hierarchy, Mike. It's like the alpha male. Yeah, ours is pretty simple. What do you mean ours is pretty God, simple? The hierarchy that we're in. Well, not really. It's of course really, it is. 
It's no, it's not Mike because except no, except ours doesn't go in. No, no, no. The hierarchy you're talking about doesn't go in who's bigger, stronger. It goes in who's got more money. Yeah. It's what, simple. what I mean, it's just no, 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 governed what, by a different. It's not. No, no, no. It's not simple. Listen, hear me out, because simple is like I say, working on instinct. In the animal kingdom, there's an alpha male. The alpha male can be challenged at any time, for instance, which doesn't happen here. The alpha male can be challenged at any time, but of course, if the alpha male ends up, you know, decking the crap out of his challenger, he remains the alpha male, and the other one maybe gets cast out of the group. Uh, you then have the the mother figures who are protected at all costs. Th- those, that's the very simple hierarchy, but that's based on uh, necessity, isn't it? You you need a strong leader to keep the others in line, to keep everyone from just trying to kill each other, and you need good mothers to be able to nurture the kids, so the kids are able to grow up and not be, you know, preyed on by anything, right? There are some that would suggest we need ah uh, the hierarchy that we're in. Well, let me get to that. What I meant was it's not simple, is that that's simple because it's based on necessity and instinct. And even if someone wants to change it, nature won't allow them if it's not in nature's best interest. Like I say, if you challenge the alpha male and you're too weak or you're not good enough at fighting or whatever, then it's not going to change. In our system, the reason it isn't... The reason it isn't... uh, It isn't as simple, Mike, is because... You know the classic hierarchy we have is because it's not based on instinct. For instance, the people at the top of the chain, they don't deserve the vast wealth and power they have. Why? That's a question that I think is best turned on its head. Really, why do they deserve? No, it? don't answer a question with a question. No, but how can I answer that? Because well, I don't know. That's why I asked you the question. Like, what the hell was that? Oh, that was me getting an email. <laughs> Puffing. How many times have I told you, professionalism, remove your electronic devices? Yes. If we agree that the people right at the very top do not deserve the amount of power and wealth basically allowed to them from previous legacies, whatever you want, that means that they should be technically open at all times to be challenged for it, okay? And in, in nature, in the animal kingdom, instinctively, they would be challenged for it. In the old days, the very, very old days, when mankind was just getting a footing, you know, hunting mammoths and whatever, you wouldn't get some puffin who'd uh, who'd killed a mammoth with the, with the uh, group and then dragged it off and had it all to himself. The rest of the group wouldn't stand for it. They'd kill him, and they'd probably eat him as well. <laughs> if he tried to hoard more than he needed, mm. the rest of them would say, we're not having this, and just kill him on the spot. Do you know what I mean? So now we have a situation where these people at the top... Have... How did they get there? I think we know how we got there, but... No, how did they get there? What, hard work and dedication? No. Go on. Oh, yeah, I'm blood, asking. Blood, bloodlines, obviously. Um, why... How did the their predecessor get there? Well, there you go. Cunning. Somewhere, you know, I, I, somewhere along the line. Somewhere along the it, line, it came from having this is an alpha I mean, male. Yeah, but no, no, no. But do you, do you understand what I mean? The, this only came about from taking themselves out of the food chain. Okay, this could only have happened when they didn't have, we, say, other animals preying on them to worry we about. We needed in our very early days a strong leader, just as animals do. But they're or not some animals. Yeah, we're not talking about leaders. Well, well, that's they that's can how, they might consider that's how they became. Oh, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Powerful. That's where it came from. That's you how think? you got. That's how you got the hierarchy. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But Otherwise, what, where did it come from? How did it start? But what I mean about this hierarchy, Mike, is that it's not simplistic because the people at the top don't generally deserve to be there. The people just below the top, again, probably don't deserve to be there. But they all have an intrinsic motivation, even if they're below the top level. They've all got an intrinsic motivation to keep the people below them from insurrection, haven't they? But that's natural. Well, I guess that you could say that's part of the the instinctual food chain thinking. Yeah, that's natural. Yeah, it's not a chain. It's not a food chain anymore, is it? I guess you call it an economic chain. But it's still natural. (laughs) Well, I guess yeah, we've turned that instinct onto something else, haven't we? Mm. Because we're not fighting for food anymore, apart from the people at the very bottom. 
Hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's growing on? So where were we? I believe we were growing about oh. something. Yeah. So what's growing on in Late Night Large World? Let us know. Are you planning a crime? Are you softly sobbing yourself to sleep with pictures of old ladies? Are you smelling the underwear of someone close to you? Please, by all means, post us a comment on our Facebook page. Mike, why don't we talk for a little bit about um, one of the revelations of the food chain, or food chains, or food webs. Me? Which is... No. <clears throat> one one of the, f- the the stranger aspects, which uh, from the trophic levels, which is a trophic cascade. Like you say, I remember kind of reading this up on this in secondary school. Do you yeah. want to kind of ex- this, this, sum it up? This sh- this shit's this shit's coming back to me. Come on, contextualize it, baby. Oh, I'll contextualize something in a minute. Trophic cascade. Uh, they occur when up uh, fro- straight from Wikipedia. This is. Our sponsor. Oh, for goodness Obviously, that. What? You can, surely you don't have to. Basically. Well, I haven't read <clears> it. No, basically, it's like we discussed. If there's, there's, there's levels to uh, to the food chain where obviously each level lower there has to be much more of creature or plant. Yeah, it's when it it's becomes when an imbalance. It's when there's a drastic, yeah, a drastic change in the number of one of the levels. The worst uh, scenarios obviously come when either the bottom or the top level is removed I'd say the bottom is probably a lot worse the bottom is definitely the worst yeah but but the top can have a pretty bad effect too uh, because obviously as strange as it sounds the uh, the puffins at the, uh, sorry the uh, the animals at the bottom <laughs> or near the bottom will <laughs> will actually rely on the apex predators at the top to keep down the numbers of the creatures that could potentially prey on them from above now if you it, remove yeah, if you remove the apex predator, say, artificially or whatever else, all of a sudden, the second level predators will increase in number because they're not being preyed on anymore. As they increase in number, what have you done now, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. As they increase in if number... You did, if, you did, if you didn't hear those sirens, by the way, that wouldn't be funny at all. Oh, but if you did, that he was, he'd be funny. Oh, yeah, apex predators... Yeah. And obviously yeah, yeah. the the the, uh, the species below. If we take out through hunting all the apex predators in a particular ecosystem, yep. then uh, that's obviously going to have an effect. The, the secondary, secondary level carnivores. Yeah, they're they're going to grow in number because there's no one picking them off anymore because yeah. uh, they keep on growing. Uh, try and catch them growing dirty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the third level uh, will find themselves going, <laughs> "What's growing on?" <laughs> obviously, that's going to have effect on the next level down. Because yeah. there's going to be more secondary level predators eating shit below them, uh, which is obviously going to have an effect on their numbers. They're going to go down. You get an imbalance. Shit, shit goes horribly wrong. Yeah, and the problem is imbalances there can needs generally to be a balance. The imbalances are generally only corrected when <clears throat> either the original predator or plant it has a renaissance, <laughs> reappears suddenly inexplicably blooms in number or a new species like a new predator of the similar level or whatever comes in either that or nature will take care of it by basically killing off the animals that no longer have enough food to survive pretty much that's the brutality if there is an imbalance eventually there will be a balance again it's just how that balance comes about yeah, because of course there's always going to be an explosion now and again in populations. Pretty soon it'll be thinned out because as long as there's predators on all levels, the numbers will go down, either by being eaten or dying from not enough sustenance itself. Now the problem with Trophic Cascades, Mike, is obviously most of these recent occurrences of Trophic Cascades have generally come because of man's activity. Bloody men. I know. We've removed ourselves from the food chain, but at the same time we're messing with other people's food chains. Isn't that so like humans? So oh, no way, man. <clears throat> hunting and overfishing, those kind of things, screw up other ecosystems. And then five years down the line, the people who kind of study these things are like, 
what the what the hell is going on? Oh, it's those assholes who just wouldn't wouldn't control themselves. Now we're we're in a situation where we have to protect certain fish. Just can't help getting involved, can we? In everything. No, although perhaps we need to uh, keep increasing what we what we take because as there's always going to be a an influx in in certain levels of the natural if you like food chain at different times and obviously then nature sorts it out (coughs) we are uh, growing in number rapidly yes Uh, yeah this this is a problem we are fighting nature from sorting out yes we are when I said man once he realised he had no more natural predators began preying on himself on each other not only that, but man then tries to manipulate nature to ensure... Mankind started out as part of a nature's food chain. Then mankind grew so intelligent and uh, progressed so much that he was able to remove himself from nature's food chain. Now we're seeing the next level Trying to where it. mankind tries to manipulate nature into creating new food chains or food chains that specifically only lead to us food that didn't exist before that we're you know trying to force nature into providing because these are the kinds of problems that crop up greed and a desire to grow although that's surely inbuilt naturally yeah but Every, every creature would has has the same desire probably we're just the only ones that have been able to to kind of do it but the irony is that most of us probably wouldn't have that ability. We've stood on the shoulders of giants and we have people at the top of society who've ridden on those achievements and we have people on the bottom who have no idea of those achievements. It's a weird progression, isn't it? Mm. I mean, like me and you, we'd have no idea how to discover electricity. I Bitch, please. I wouldn't know how to build a house. I discovered electricity. I... I wouldn't personally be able to uh, arrange irrigation for a field. Chronic irrigation. Oh. I could arrange that. I was going to say, I could put a pressure hose at your backside and then blow blow your ass off. (laughs) Or, yeah, turn it on to suck. Oh, I'll turn it on to suck. We're going to be back (laughs) with more talk of rectal prolapses after... Don't be a puffin. Listen to Late Night Large. Mike actually was making a good point while we were on the break there. You're damn straight. And it doesn't happen very often, so I'm going to underline it. piss off. I'll underline you in a minute. <laughs> I'll undermine you. So, we were talking... He was he was basically saying... He didn't say it. He said something that triggered the thought in me. Oh, it and it was go, quite yeah. a good analogy, which was... Uh, mankind used to play a game of risk with nature. We he, used to be part he, of nature's he game. Then, he then opted out of this game... But he's now trying to take the spoils without actually playing. So he's trying to make it a no risk game. If yeah. you if you dig me. We yeah. We we were part of, of nature's game and uh nature's dictated how the game worked and the rules and you know, it, it worked. Then uh, eventually we got so good at the game that we managed to remove ourselves from it and well, to a certain level. And now, as we continue to grow in intelligence, growing, always growing, you know, we've gone from being underneath nature, if you like. Nature is the supreme power, so we're and, to be uh, which dictates, master. yeah, which dictates how the game is played and the rules, you know. And uh, we managed to remove, us, remove ourselves from that to a certain degree. Yeah. And now we're trying to dictate to nature how shit works. <laughs> Is there an argument, Mike, that, for instance, if you walked into a, <coughs> a bar, if you walked into, uh, a, we make a joke out of it. No, we, go on. I, I, yeah, if you walked into a seedy nightclub, oh yeah, into the back, oh yeah, poker with the with the with the dangerous man, yeah, the uh, the dodgy geezers, yeah, as I regularly do, yeah, and you were, <coughs> like I say, you, you you were playing the game, and you thought, oh, I don't really want to leave my house. And then uh, you got really good at the game, and you kept winning, but you thought, this isn't going to last forever. And then you just uh, pulled out a gun, 
and told the dealer to piss off because now you did <laughs> what would happen to you now I'm fairly sure that would probably result in either you being riddled with bullets or taken out back for a good kicking once they'd uh, forcibly removed the firearm what I'm trying to say Mike is we, we've tried to put a, a gun to Nature's head and uh, is it a coincidence all these natural disasters all of a sudden maybe mm. Nature's turning the tables Maybe saying I, I let you go so far and now you're trying now, to, now you're trying to, yeah now you're trying to claim that you are me I'm afraid you're going to be taken out of the game yeah without making light of tsunamis and what have you constant you know, battle it? with nature yeah maybe nature's fighting back and saying we've grown too big for nature's liking exactly and well it's the old adage isn't it, it God loves his children God wants his children to do well for themselves, but when God's children aspire to be God, then he has to slap them down. Mm. God That's being cool. nature, of course. It's kind of like me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I getting too big for your boots. I love you a lot. You know, I want you to do well, but uh, push it. Push you it know, really forget good. forget your uh, your place. Then I will slap you down <laughs> and remind you. That it's me and Chuck Norris <laughs> at the top of this food chain. <laughs> this food right? chain. At the top of this chain, this hierarchy, yeah. this level, this this uh, command. Me, me and Chuck. All right, me slightly higher than Chuck. You and Chuck and we had a fight about it once, and uh, yeah, he he put me in hospital, but <laughs> <coughs> he was in intensive care for three months, so I think oh, I okay. I won. All right. <laughs> But it was close. I mean, Chuck's obviously come closer than anyone else. <laughs> That's a lesson to you. Don't try and uh, surpass me, because even Chuck Norris couldn't. Don't give it the big end. Don't give it the big end, because I'm bigger. Oh, OK, right. <laughs> and that is what she said. Of course. So, Mike, where do scavengers fall in with this? It depends, this doesn't chain? it? I guess. It depends on what they scavenge on, at what level they... What do you mean what they scavenge on? Well, Don't all scavengers scavenge on, like, carrion, dead dead material? What I'm saying is what, what level of the food chain they scavenge on. Depends what... Oh, I guess, that, I guess they don't really... Oh, they... No, scavengers are outside, aren't they? Because they have no effect on numbers. You think... Uh, I because guess. Because technically, technically, surely they're only scavenging stuff that hasn't been picked up by predators first anyway because yeah. scavengers if they're challenged by predators I'm sure scavengers will, will just run away vultures hyenas can you think of any other scavengers you <laughs> I love feasting on a bit of dead meat now and again I oh, don't I know it oh. <laughs> so don't there I we go yeah um, Scavengers, I guess they live out kind of outside the law. They're like outlaws, nature's outlaws, and they're also nature's the waste collection. They are indeed. So, Mike, have we got anything else to say about food chains? We've got a few minutes left. Are they good or bad? What do you mean? Are they good or bad? Well, you know, let's call it off. Call off all food chains. The rules have changed. All right. What would happen? I I could do that if you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Does do you want me to? Okay. Right, the thing about food chains... <laughs> there, we can, there's always going to be food chains. Yeah, obviously. And there needs to be. There has to be. Yeah. But, I mean, they are quite cruel, aren't they? No. Why not? Why are they cruel? Would you like to be eaten by a predator? Do you eat chicken? That's different, though. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> like to be eaten, no. Okay. However, you know, plants or, or okay, no, whatever, yeah. shit at the bottom. Yeah. If it could, had if it had the capacity to choose, would choose not to want to be eaten. You know, the the bo the the primary consumers don't want to be eaten. <laughs> Second, don't want to be eaten. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So okay. Yeah, let's talk about nature as the games master again, because obviously nature... The apex it, don't want to be eaten, but yeah, if they fuck me it, off... <laughs> okay, nature nature creates this this amazing kind of paradigm 
And it. But the thing about nature it's is. It's not about what you want, it's necessity, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing about Survive. nature. That is nature. It is a wonderful game because nature obviously threw these animals around and, and said, uh, and said, oh, by the way, you'll find this tasty, and you'll find this tasty, and you'll find this tasty, but I'm afraid you're going to be eaten by everything else. But nature is not one to throw people in the deep end without any armbands, that because helps. they will... Nature will bestow on them gifts. You know, it's like, for instance, an analogy would be nature has thrown... Uh, them into the labyrinth to face the minotaur and at first you're like this is a shitty deal but then nature throws you a sword or a shield or an invisibility cloak because we're talking about the animals lower down the food chain they're given special skills aren't they they are indeed you've got the you know the poisonous frogs you've got the animals that can fly You've got yeah. the animals who can spring and climb exceptionally high. Bees with sting. You've got bees with, uh, well, S- well yeah, yeah, more wasps. More but yeah. wasps, yeah. Uh, and, you know, you, yeah, you have animals with barbs, you have animals with uh, false eyes, you have animals... That look, stick insects. That yeah. Up camouflage. Camouflaged animals, you have animals yeah. that can see exceptionally well in the dark, you have animals that can only see through sound. So nature's fantastic at giving these creatures incredible abilities yeah and different it is it is a wonderful game the way that they do you know you are essentially throwing them into a pit and saying you'll either be eaten or you're you'll probably you might escape so yeah this is who you are this is what you are this is where these are are. these are the powers i give you but have this power like superhero (laughs) yeah but but it is isn't it have this ability and you know see how you get on yeah, I'll give you this ability. Oh, yeah, I'm not throwing. I'm not throwing you out there to the wolves. You know, completely <laughs> with with nothing. You yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. You're 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 pretty low down in the food chain, but you know you can do this. Yeah. You make a, it work for you. You're a tiny little frog, but I'm gonna make you lava red, and you know your skin's poisonous. So you know, even if a creature does manage to eat you, they're gonna regret it. <laughs> yeah. Nature is kind as well as cruel. I think we've uh, interesting determined. Yeah. That's what nature is. Again, mankind is very jealous of nature. Tries to imitate, but never betters, to be honest. Well done, nature. We love you. And well done, food chains. There's only one food chain, of course, that Mike cares about. KFC, McDonald's, Subway, Domino's. Have I missed one? Very (laughs) keen. Oh, dear. Well, we had a lot of fun tonight, Mike. We did. We grew. Grow you later, people.